Well, our moms think we're funny. I'm just curious about this. Sure. And we probably won't make it all the way through it, but that's what mm-hmm. she said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she comes too slow. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Akomi. Hey everybody, this is Turk182. Thank you, Akomi! You're welcome. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. You see, if I do it right every time, you don't appreciate it. If I do it right, <laughs> oh, that's you need appreciation. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, more validation. Uh, I do appreciate you. <laughs> uh, there used to be, when I worked the uh, one job I worked at, there was one person that nobody really liked because they were, they were, they were really kind of phony and just, no, uh, they were just bad, bad people all around. Well, just the all around. They had friends, obviously. That's one thing, the weird thing is like bad people always have friends. And you're like, how could you be friends with this person? It's like, they're shitty. And you see them being shitty. It's like one thing where you have like a boss is an asshole of a shitty boss, mm-hmm. but they go home and you're pretty sure they're not like that with their family. <laughs> yeah. So then when something bad happens to them and everyone's like, yeah, you're like, how could you do that? You're talking about my dad. Like your dad was a <laughs> fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you're talking you about never, my stepbrother. Right. You never saw that. <laughs> right. But everybody else did, you know, <laughs> which is really kind of hard. Be, but then you have to be like, why would you treat these people like shit? And then treat these people like, can't you only treat people like shit that deserve to be treated like shit, you know, right, the ones yeah. that have asked for it. But anyway, um, but when you're, when you're around them and you see them treating people like shit and, and you're like, yeah, but we should, we can still be friends. And like, <laughs> well, no, it's, I, I've never understood. But anyway, this person, like I said, they were, they were just a piece of shit and uh, I never liked them, but they, um, they would always end any kind of like email request with like, you know, thanks for all, thanks for all you do. <laughs> and it, it it never even from the first time they did it never had any kind of like ring of truth or that you were thankful <laughs> at all. It was just something they just tossed in like and it's like thank you all thank you for all you do. And it actually became a joke among other people <laughs> that we would just see like something like oh and thank you for all that you do. I'm like oh you're welcome for all that you do. Yeah. It was probably like their pre-written uh sign out on their email right you know i have you can customize that shit and not look yeah i have have one it's on my signature you know so it has all my stuff on there Mm -hmm. but i don't always but i will change it instead of saying like you know thank you i may like you know change and be like thanks or sometimes depending what it is i just like take it all out together but like have a great day i never say say, have a nice day i always have great have a great day yeah have a nice day just just sounds just fake like (laughs) have a nice day go 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 Yours affectionately. Happy a nice D day. D pity. D to the P. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Turk, what we're we're talking about something serious today, aren't we? Yes, we are. All right, that little, little bit of levity to kind of trick you guys into the serious thing we're going to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. So, um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, and you know, it's the world that you guys live in. And here's the sad thing. <laughs> These are the hands we're given. Yeah. Uh. Oh, sorry, I was gonna. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, here's a sad thing, and this is what's really, really sad, is that at the time we're recording this, there's shit going on in the world. Mm-hmm. But by the time we post it, there will still be shit going on in the world. Yeah, just like new shit. Right, we could record this today and not post it. Well, obviously we are recording it today, but we could <laughs> we could record this and not post it for another year, and it would still be just as topical. Mm-hmm. And that's sad. That is. That, that's, that's sad. That is, yeah. Um, so, you know, we're... This episode is going to be very, very serious um, because we're, we're a serious topic. And, you know, not that we're big-time celebrities or anything like that. But, you know, I think at, with a small audience that... Uh, an audience of any size, you know, whether it's one person or it's 20 people or a, a million people. You know, if you do have an audience, then I think sometimes it is your duty to kind of address a real situation. Not necessarily give like your opinion on it or whatever, but at least address and put it out there. Be like, hey, this is something real that's going on, mm-hmm. and you should be aware. You know, and yeah, I'm not yeah. telling you what action to take, but at least you should be aware. And so, because we do have an audience, we want to just take a moment and just address a real situation that's going on in the world. Yeah, and uh, and just say, hey, this this is real. This is this is happening. This is out there. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, like, it, it's especially <laughs> like it especially hits home hard with me because as an anarchist, I'm kind of terrified of America's foreign policy. So, like, it's like I don't want to dare to hope that, you know, there might be a silver lining here just because it's like uh, I've been, you know, I've, I've seen, pe- like, people get shafted too many times from it. And, you know, when it comes to foreign policy, we've never had the best foreign policy in the world. We've always, 
we've consistently turned our backs on people that we've called allies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's it, it's one thing to to you know, trade somebody like, oh, you guys need um, you guys need food. Right. Well, you know, we need guns and then or, or we need bullets for our guns. You give them food. They give you bullets. You then put those bullets in your gun and shoot them and take the food back. That's kind of what we do sometimes as America. <laughs> and sometimes you, you, you kind of have to, like in order, not, not that extent, but you have to, to, you can't be friends with everybody. And sometimes like, you know, you've had people where you're like, I'm friends with this person, I want, I'm friends with this person, and I want us all to be friends together, but those two people don't like each other. Right, yeah. And so, so then you're like, when, when person A, so when, when like, uh, like Lindsay says, Hey, you want to go out, but you can't because you've already told, like, you know, like Andy that you're going to hang out with him. Yeah. You can't say, I can't because I'm going to hang out with Andy because Lindsay, like, thinks Andy's an asshole. She's like, why would you want to spend time with him over me? (laughs) You know, so you're going to be like, oh, I just got to kind of (laughs) lie. Yeah. uh... And that's kind of how foreign policy is sometimes. Like, yeah, you're like, I'm friends with this guy, I'm friends with this guy, but when this guy needs help, I can't say, no, I can't help you because I'm actually helping this guy instead. Right, yeah. You know, but. It's it's something different when you're like when you're like yeah I can't help you, in fact I'm gonna pretend like I'm helping you and then just shit all over you, <laughs> <laughs> which is um, more often than not the case. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, just just trying to make you aware for those of you that um, that haven't really looked much into this and you don't really have to, but I, I think you'd be doing yourself a great disservice if you didn't put a little bit of effort into it and just look out there, just you know Google, go through history. And see that a lot of enemies that America has, they kind of made themselves. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Through one mean or another, like, these aren't just people that just hate us. They hate us because of something we did to them in the past that was that was uncalled for. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah. That suited our needs, but at the risk of their country or right. their people. Um, and it's unfortunate. It is. It is. I mean, you know, it, it, it was just announced, uh, I believe last night, that uh, the U.S. and the Taliban... They've started a seven-day discussion on reduction in violence, uh, for an agreement of reduction in violence. And, like, I mean, you know, we're, we're looking, at, like, looking at 18 years of conflict here, so, you know, that's that's a pretty significant thing here. But, like I said, you know, I've just, I've, I've seen that bite, you know, all involved parties in the ass way too many times. That, like, I don't know if I really feel super optimistic about it either. Well, you know, I think the fear for me is that as as I like the idea of what it's about and what's going to come, what should come from it, but you know, there is always a give and take. You know, you there's 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 that yin yang to everything. Mm-hmm. So, what is this peace going to cost us? Right, right. You know, or or what is this this into into violence going to cost us? Like, where where is that shift going to occur? Right. Um. And, there, and there's always going to be a shift. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't engage in this, but there's always going to be a shift. And you kind of have to look at that and see. And unfortunately, sometimes that you don't even know what that shift is going to be until years later. There's nothing you can calculate right now. Um, but then you will see kind of how it how it did. It's like, oh, this had this effect now. And you, you can't, you well, can't be- take it back. It's because America's like that guy. When you're doing online gaming... And uh, you know, you like you get on the team and all that, and there's always just that one guy who's just a, like only in it for himself, and so he's like gonna ninja all the loot, and uh, you know, like oh sure, you Leroy know, you, Jenkins, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, like you know, you've got like yes, you know, I know that like two of my teammates need a Johnson? gun. Uh, I think it might be okay. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, I know that two of my teammates need a gun, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it for myself because I like shotguns. It's like, well, you already have like three fucking rifles, you douche. Right. It's, I, I don't know. I, I don't do a lot of online gaming, but and that's a big reason why because I've had too many bad experiences with online gaming. It just, it pisses me off. Well, they, we were talking about that before when we were talking about playing the uh, the Friday Thirteenth um, yeah. like video game, yeah. and I'm like, you, I can only play that if I'm playing with a bunch of people that I know and trust. So if it's you, me. Like, you know, uh, 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 Analog Aperture, you know, J.O. Bowyer, whatever. And I know that you guys aren't going to fuck me. Or if you did, right, it would be, you know, only when it was funny, you know. You have to at least buy me a drink first. Right. (laughs) Right. It's like, but I know that, you know, it would just just be, you know, for fun. It wouldn't be because you have malicious intent. Right, right. As opposed to, 
when you've got these other people that you're online with and, you're, and people that just want to just fuck you over. Yeah. You know, just because, like, it's funny to them to to screw you over. And, like, can, so there was a um, there was a, some people I used to know and I hung out with just because I didn't have anybody else to hang out with, right? And I didn't really care for them. They didn't really care for me, right? And I will say I was a little immature at the time still, too. So, you know, I, I wasn't really looking at the world through the right eyes. Right. But we were playing Risk. And if you've ever played Risk, <laughs> Risk is a friendship ender. <laughs> if you've ever played Risk, you'll know that there are there are two types of people that that play Risk. There are people that play Risk because they love it, and for them, it's so important that the game kind of go on and never end. Like they want to win, <laughs> yes. but you have people that have like like Risk games that go on for days. <laughs> You know, we'll play and we'll stop and we'll come back like tomorrow, like three days later and play for like another six to eight hours. Mm -hmm. And then you've got people that are like, hey, I played Risk for about 30 minutes. And I was like, this is fucking boring. And then I never played it again, (laughs) you know. So we were playing Risk and the one person was losing. And at that point, they made it their mission to make sure that I lost too. (laughs) Just to fuck everyone else over. Just to fuck you over. Just just fuck me over. (laughs) And I'm like, well, it's what's a dick like, move. right? It is like, <laughs> why? Look, I'm losing, but I want to make sure that you lose too. <laughs> like, okay, like, why? Why is that important? Why is that important that 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 you make sure that I lose as well? Um, and you know, because it brought them some kind of happiness or satisfaction. I'm like, okay, I like some. I like to play games to play games to have fun. I don't right, want yeah. to get involved with somebody that's out there that's just. You know, like, oh, I'm just gonna fuck you over because I think it's fun, and <laughs> right, like, right. But, and and that's all they want to do. They just want to screw with you. They have no interest in actually playing the game, and that pisses me off. That's why I don't do online games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So it's and and it's a shame because most of the like because I'm more of a console guy. I'm not a PC guy. Um. And I think with PC game, PC it's more of an online community. <laughs> PC gay. <laughs> yeah. PC gay. <laughs> Yeah, that's when you're gay, but you have to be real sensitive when you talk to other people about it. It's, it's PC gay. That's when you only tell people that you're homosexual, right. not gay. Right. <laughs> it's like, like e- even among the other gay people, you can't use the F word, right? <laughs> They'd be like, we're being around a bunch of black guys and can't say the N word. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. We don't do that here. I'm not sure, but you know, <laughs> we're PC black. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, but in the console things, you have so many more games that are going like online only. It's mm-hmm. like they want that whole online thing, and uh, and you don't really have like what you have with like a Mario Kart or whatever, where it's like everyone gets together in one location and plays. Like if you want to play in something um, like with multiplayer, it has to be online. But then a lot of times you're playing with a bunch of people that you don't know or you don't like or. Yep. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't. They, if I don't know you, I don't like you. That's just how it is. <laughs> Well, you know. and, and like they just they do this like spamming thing. They like I mean, Nintendo doesn't really balance because they they want party games. They don't want like competitive tournament things. That's been their big complaint with Smash Brothers is that they made Smash Brothers as a party game, and then they like you know people started making it this serious competitive tournament, and like that's why they did a lot of changes in Brawl when Brawl came out on the Wii. It was like, oh, we're going to, like, make these characters randomly trip, and we're going to, like, make some characters, like, super, super powerful and some really weak just so that, like, little kids can have a chance. And, like, they they just took out all the balance that made it tournament-friendly, and everybody hated it. Oh, like Marvel vs. Capcom uh, Infinite, or whatever (laughs) it was. Press triangle to win. Yeah. (laughs) But, um... I think the game was designed by Tommy Wiseau. You press, you press triangle, win. You just press triangle and you win. Maybe you're a vampire. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, like... Like, I mean, just, that's that... I, I hate doing Smash Brothers online because you'll get these people who are like, I'm the projectile fighter. And then it's like, oh, here, I'm going to use all my projectiles. And they just stay at the other end of the stage, just like nickeling and diming you with like arrows or boomerangs or some shit and it's like no just just fucking fight me yeah this we talked about that before and we're just like the, in that, that whole mentality of like well if you were a better game player you'd be able to get out of this no yeah, okay all right yeah yeah because like e- even back in the 90s people didn't like fucking hate the guys who just spammed hadouken yeah <laughs> Like, that was that guy. That, you know, you you who get on Smash Brothers and just play Link and spam the boomerang and the arrows, you are 
what the 90s had of just Hadouken, 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 and yep. everybody hates you. <laughs> Nobody thinks you're cool or a good gamer. They just hate you. Right. It's a whole, the whole mentality of like where winning is most important. It doesn't really matter how you won, just mm -hmm. to say that you won. It's 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 almost like the equivalent of getting a uh, participation like award. Mm -hmm. Right? He was like, "Oh, I won! I won!" I it was like, "Yeah, but are you a really good player?" No, I just know this one move, <laughs> but I won, and I beat everybody who ever plays me by doing this one move. But are you a great player? No, but I win. It doesn't <laughs> matter if I'm. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I'm a great player. You know, I win. <laughs> My kill death ratio is really high. Yeah, it's like, and it isn't isn't winning okay. isn't winning the mark of a great player. <laughs> now, that'd be like me like running a relay race, and as I'm like running, I just start shooting everybody else on the field, <laughs> 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 and they'd be like, <laughs> just shatter somebody's kneecap with a wrench. <laughs> right. And, like, and you're, you're a bad racer. If you were a good racer, you wouldn't have gotten hit in the knees with a wrench. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, but I won. I just see you with the gold medal. <laughs> If that's the case, why don't you just break into the, the Olympic Committee's house in the middle of the night and just beat him and just take all the medals? Like, I got them all. I'm not even a wrestler. I got the wrestling one, too. I want to make a that. movie of this. If you were a better Olympic athlete, then you would have gone into his house and stole his medals. I, I do want to address this is kind of a pet peeve. People are always saying that, like, oh, you know, like, the millennial generation's a bunch of softies who have to always have these participation trophies. Like, the millennial generation didn't get that thing started. That was their parents saying, What do you mean my son's not a good athlete? I don't care that he didn't place in the race. He needs a trophy too. Yeah, these are the same people that we become, they complain about how, you know, it, it, it's, it's not fair that... that um, so, uh, so they're like, my, my child needs to get a trophy because, you know, they were in it too. But then mm -hmm. they would also complain about how... Well, why is it that, you know, that... That this person is is like getting something where it's like they're not that good, right? Like, yeah, but you just <laughs> said that because showing up he needs something. But then if I if I give if that gets in like the the awards for like MVP or whatever, this don't really matter. If yeah, everyone gets an yeah. award for showing up, yeah, I I, I yeah, I just I, I don't like my generation being blamed for the participation trophies. Like, no, we were just along for the ride. Well, and yes, my generation is a bunch of softies who needs them, but we didn't start that. <laughs> Well, you know, you know what that started from? Oh, I think it started from hmm. that whole like birthday party. And here's a gift bag. Yep. Wait, no, <laughs> I'm not giving you a fucking gift bag. You yep, came to the yep. party. You got cake. You got ice cream. You know, you we watched a movie. <laughs> yeah, this whole party cost me like two hundred dollars. You bought a ten dollar gift. Yep. All right, and then I'm gonna have to give you a bag for showing up. Like I'm giving you, <laughs> hey, thank you for coming to this party that you've been wanting to come to the entire time because all you've been talking about for two weeks is like it's gonna be cake and ice cream. We're gonna run around. We're gonna ride a pony. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and all this kind of shit, right? And then on top of that, it's like I give you a fucking ten dollar gift card to Starbucks too. Like, <laughs> so basically, you just paid all these kids to show up at the birthday party. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It's like, like you just bribed them to have friends. Wait, that like that's some bullshit. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I never really thought about that, but yeah. I mean, Which, you know, I, what happens when you, when you, like, it's like the same thing, like, the, the people that go to the, the Academy Awards, they get gift bags. <laughs> and they having them, like, 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 the, like, whatever, like, the hottest new cell phone is, and yeah, all this kind yeah. of stuff. And these gift bags are worth, like, a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, that's some bullshit, too. These are people that can afford this shit. Right, Why yeah. Why don't you get into the homeless for every, every, like, Hollywood star that shows up? I'm going to give a meal to a homeless guy, <laughs> as opposed to giving you people that make, like, millions of dollars a year shit you can buy <laughs> just by waking up in the morning. Like, you already have two of the newest iPhones. Do you really need a third? Right, it's like, you know, like I'm, I made a thousand dollars just by pushing the snooze button on my alarm. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even done anything. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, all, all that stuff is really frustrating to me. Yeah, I, yeah, because when, when does this end? Like, when you, like, when I had to get older, it was like, hey, I'm celebrating my 40th birthday. And so, <laughs> and, and it's like, now I just can't give you, like, a, like a $10 gift card to Starbucks. Now I got to, like, you know... I don't know. Give you like here, here's a diamond color, you know, like pinky ring for everyone. <laughs> so now, so now my birthday party, which you know, which I paid for, all you guys to show up there. With now, it cost me like you know five hundred dollars for my birthday party, but now it cost me an additional thousand dollars to give you all some gifts. <laughs> I'm like shit. Yeah, I was just went to, didn't have a birthday party. That's why. That's why older people now don't have birthday. Party. So you can have a party? No, <laughs> no. I'm just going to spend, like, the $1,500 on myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I've spent a lot of my birthdays just trying to, like, do my own thing. And, like, you, you know that I always, like, 
I do my Fight Club thing. I, I kick back with a with with some whiskey and just like enjoy Fight Club and all that jazz. But I I kind of want to just do like a birthday party at an arcade again. There's nothing saying that I can't do that as a thirty year old man, you know. There's there there isn't, and the great thing about that. Is, and then I wouldn't have to get anybody any fucking party favors. Right. The great thing about it is that, hey, I'm having a birthday party. It's going to be at this place here. All you need to do is just show up and have fun. Yeah. You don't have to bring me anything. I mean, if you want to bring me something, fine. But we're not making a big affair of it. I just want to get together with my friends yeah. and have fun. That's what the, that's what Douglas does. Nice. Um, you know, he's he's like, hey, for my birthday, he likes to go to uh, Dave and Buster's. Mm-hmm. So we get together, you know, when we can. We go to Dave and Buster's. You know, everyone pays for their own meal. Um, and I think you like we'll watch, they'll watch a movie too, um, and if they pay for their own meal and then sit there and hang out. David Buster's he just wants to have his friends around. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, that I I actually kind of want to do that. I, I should try to get something like that arranged. There's really not a decent arcade within my area, but oh, I hate I fucking hate David Buster's. I go there Nobody because likes Buster's. because he likes going there and I like hanging out with my friends and and when those like. I can hang out with my. I should be able to hang out with my friends anytime I want to, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, it seems like like the only time I can really make time for them is if there is some kind of like special occasion type thing going yeah, on. Like, yeah. Oh, it's a birthday party. This person's doing this or whatever. As opposed to just going over there anytime, and just being like, "Hey, I'm gonna come over here and you know hang out with you guys." <laughs> so it gives me, it allows me to to hang out with them and uh, and. And I get to do that. So, but I don't like Dave and Buster's. I, right, I think that's right. a it's fucking Chuck E. Cheese for adults. I, I hate pretty it pretty much. Okay, so I know we tip we try not to talk about the movies that we have playing in the background while we're watching this, but since we were talking about body paint in the last episode, this this blue alien chick, I was gonna say that there was like nice even coverage on her uh, body makeup, but look there at her neck. Yeah, where the collar is, the body paint ends. And if you look down at her cleavage line when it shows that, yeah, it's, it, it's also there on her tits. And also on her bikini line. Yep. Yeah, so it's so, obvious that, that they painted her after, after they she was in, and, Right, instead of painting her and then putting her in the costume. Because, Which because is it's so in the, shitty. In the fight scenes, like it's not rubbing off on the other, on the other actor. So, it, you know, it's, it's obviously the, the body paint is wet. Plus... Her her look does not match her at all. That no. blue and then the, the the bad red mystique wig and everything, it, it all looks bad. They needed a different color for her than that, that blue or even a lighter shade of blue or deeper shade of soul. I don't know. But um uh It does, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 um <laughs> it's, it's a good movie. <laughs> yeah, but uh yeah, it's 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 yeah. Yeah, we try to talk about it because so so since you did mention it, you know, we always have some kind of thing. Um, uh, we always have some kind of movie in the background because I think I said this before. Uh, like we can't just look at each other um, <laughs> while we're doing a podcast. That's getting I mean, lost in one another's soulful eyes. Right. It's you know we we're you know we're sitting next to each other and, like doing this and <laughs> five feet apart because we're not gay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and sometimes just to make sure there's a like, even enough distance, I have like a little like mannequin. I'll put there, <laughs> just just like a placeholder, you know. This, and then we'll like, figure out where we're gonna sit, and then we'll put the mannequin away. Because even the mannequin being that close to us, it just kind of feels weird. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't feel I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel I don't feel safe. Um, Wait, Emo Phillips is on Twitter. Emo Phillips? Yeah, I didn't even know he was still alive. Yeah, apparently so, and on Twitter. Wow. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't he a uh, um, God? What, what was? What did he do? I, the only thing I know him from is that he had an appearance uh, in the Weird Al movie UHF, and he's like, "All right, I'm going to show the kids how to use a table saw." And then he like slices his finger off, and his finger's just like spurting blood on Al, and he's like, "Oh, this is so embarrassing. This never happens to me. Can you believe this?" So where where did he where? What did he do to make him popular? I don't know. I think it was all just like weird humor like that. Like a comedian? Yeah, yeah. Nah, that didn't sound right. I mean, I, I like I said, all I know him from is from UHF. Which is uh, a fairly fantastic film. We do need to... I don't know if we need to do a Let's Watch of it, but you do need to see it. Okay. So... Um. Anyway, what was I talking about just a minute ago? We were saying something. Um, 
I, I'm not sure, but um, I know I was talking about Fight Club earlier, and that brings up, uh, and maybe we should save this for like a film oh. theory episode. I was talking about the the background movie. Oh yeah, yeah that's, you know, right. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. So, but a lot of times we just put just crap on because we don't want anything that's distracting. You know, even though sometimes we're like, well, what the hell is that? We don't want anything that's too distracting to where it's like we start watching a movie and then we're not doing a thing. So we just put something on that's, that is notably going to be bad. Yes. But just we were like, like what the fuck? Um, and, and so, but, but we never want to tell you the bad thing we're watching. Sometimes we were watching, we're like, oh, we're watching this movie here or something. But we never want to tell you the bad thing we're watching because it, it's something really bad. I mean, we do our let's watches and mm-hmm. those are bad movies, but it's something, you know. These are the movies that are too bad to make into the let's watch docket. Right. And yeah, and they're really, they, right now they really are just time fillers or space fillers. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you are saying something about Fight Club? Fight Club, yeah. And like I said, maybe this should like hold off until like one of our film theory episodes. But um, it, it was kind of dawning on me. And, you know, we've talked about this. I watch it every year and it always like, something new always jumps out to me every time. And uh, this this year, it kind of occurred to me, I think there's pretty good reason to believe that like rather than the and so spoiler alert for those who haven't seen Fight Club yet we're about to get into some spoilers for the ending go watch the movie before you uh, if, if you haven't already watched the movie listening to this podcast what the fuck are you doing go watch the movie before you listen to this but I, I do want to discuss this I think there's some pretty good evidence that rather than it being the narrator is the real guy and Tyler Durden is his schizophrenic double or the figment of his imagination. I think it's the other way around. Okay, wait, wait. Say again that you think that who's the what now? I, I think that Tyler is the real guy and he's imagining Jack, not the other way around. Because the movie kind of presents it like, oh, Jack is this, you know, this normal schmo. And he creates this ubermensch in Tyler Durden who's like everything that he wants to be. Right. But when they're when they're arguing with each other in the warehouse, and Jack says, "This can't be real. You're a figment of my imagination." Tyler responds with, "You're, You're a figment, figment of my imagination." Yeah, but he yeah. says, but he clearly says, you know, I didn't come up with you know with some loser guy to make myself feel uh, feel worse. Yeah, I mean, well, I think that's like a justification in his mind because, like, you know, Tyler is an Ubermensch type character. He is like this this basic embodiment of perfection. And I think that Jack kind of represents his insecurities, and he represents these things that he struggles with where nobody's actually perfect. And so he he's basically projecting all of his insecurities onto this imaginary guy of like, oh, here's this guy who wishes he were me. I look like he wants to look. I fuck like he wants to fuck. All that stuff. So he's bas- this is basically like his way of actually trying to do that. And so I think he's basically overcompensating when he tells Jack... You know, I didn't come up with you to make myself feel better. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. Well, what, why, why, when, when, when Jack is okay, now, I, because I love Fight Club and you love Fight Club, and and we we both love Fight Club for. I thought we both we had like a very similar vision on this, but oh, I did until this year. <laughs> but but I think it. But well, maybe things will change when you watch it again next year, and you will kind of realign what the movie is really <laughs> about. Because why would why would somebody that is that is is clearly like superior not not superior to people but he's he's clearly the better person I mean, he's the person he wants to be like see, i mean so first off he's got the right look he's free of of all the entanglements of life he doesn't have to he doesn't really answer to anybody except for himself he can do what he wants and you know he's really good at whatever he does, whether this fucking drinking or whatever it is. Why would he want to create some loser guy to be like, oh, now I want to live half of my life being you know under somebody's I, thumb or you know having to pay bills and do this? Because I think that like, and here's, here's a girl that I'm fucking, but now <laughs> I want to be like, oh no, now I'm gonna push you away and pretend like I don't want to fuck you because well, that's. I, I think there's there's like elements of that too, like. I think he kind of resents himself for going with a crazy chick like Marla. And so even though he's trying to he's trying to like justify why, oh yeah, it's okay for me, but you stay away from her. She's a predator disguised as a prey and all that. But I, I think there's like a certain level of resentment with himself for winding up with someone like Marla. So that manifests in his jack half where it's like... More like jackass. <laughs> no, like he he's like trying to justify like, oh no, I really don't like her. I'm going to... You know, I, I don't want her in my life, so he he winds up pushing her away. I think I think that like all the building blocks are there. But okay, so I want to push someone away, and I don't want you to like someone 
that is clearly made for us. We align in such a proper way. But right? does she, though? <laughs> yeah, she does. The whole point of the movie, I mean, god damn. It's the... Okay, for someone who has lived in a, a life that has primarily put them in... In, in a position where they're more by themselves than they are with others, right? Whether it's by your doing or not, when you find someone you can connect with, right? Who has who has the same, like, the same issues that you have where you're like, that you can really, like, I can speak to you, you can understand. When they say that and they're with, like, you know, uh, like, why they go to the groups is like, you know, when, you know, when people think you're dying, they really listen to you instead of just waiting for their turn to speak. So they know what that feels like and they want to be heard Right. Why would you then push that away and be like, no, this is a bad person because they because they match with me so well and they can understand who I am and I can understand them. And I find someone I can connect with. I want to push them away because like the, the understood thing in the movie is that, oh, Jack is the default and Tyler represents like his self-destructive. Oh, I'm going to hit bottom side. But no, it's like that Tyler is the default and Jack is his self-destructive side. Wherein like, yes, Marla would ground him and be good for him, but he's pushing that away because he resents himself for doing something that he actually needs to do. Oh, he, so he resents himself for being happy? Yeah, in a lot of so, ways, yes. So, so, his, so his whole thing is like, like, oh, I'm living the best life that I can. I'm doing what I want to do. This is exactly where I want to be, but I don't deserve it. You know, so now I'm going to come up with a reason why I shouldn't have it, even though I've been living this way, you know, for as long as I want. And it works out very well for me. It's just like how Marla calls him Tyler all throughout the later half of the movie. I mean, it's all right there. It's all, you just gotta, like, read between the lines of the dialogue. It's all right there. She calls him Tyler because that's to a person she connected with. She didn't connect with, uh, was it, um, Cornelius, Rupert, <laughs> Travis? Exactly. Any of the fake names that he gives? Exactly. It's all fake names. She doesn't even know the fuck that guy is, but she knows Tyler. Yeah, because he's the real we, guy. Cause, <laughs> that's my point. Because he's a real guy. Yeah, because Tyler's the real him. Exactly. Boom! No! You, you have no answer. <laughs> no, I do have an answer, because Tyler is not the real guy. Even though that's that's his name, and that's all right. she knows him by, because, because nobody Jack knows his real name. Because Jack doesn't know how to connect with someone. Because he's not real? No, because... <laughs> okay, let me ask you this, alright? From the person who immediately dismissed me when we met... <laughs> Okay, for the person that did that. Okay, hold oh, Whoa. <laughs> oh, no, you want to get fucking serious. We're going to get serious here. You dismissed me and pushed me away when we first met, and we couldn't even come up with a friendship until years later. Years, well. I mean... Okay, years later, before we were able to really come up and establish a friendship, and then realize that we, well, prior to today, had a lot of stuff in common, right? And and then you're trying to tell me that like no 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 that was that that this is this is not the real life I'm just I'm just living this life right now this persona with you because really I need to make myself feel bad because there's actually a better Akomi out there that's what I live on a day to day basis but you know what I don't feel like I'm worthy of that so I'm gonna go hang out and schlub with you you know someone who's technically beneath me right who <laughs> okay ho, ho I I think we're both getting a little bit heated here. I say we like settle this off, mic, we'll go to an ad break, and uh, we're really fucking off topic here. So, oh, I, okay, so yeah, now you want to back out and everything because you know you're wrong. No, I mean, because the, the whole the whole thing sets up, and it's like here's someone who's trying to find a way to be who they want to be, and you're trying to tell me that here's someone who's who are they who they want to be, and it's like, but now they're like, oh, well, I don't deserve it. Now, here's you someone know? who thinks that they are what they want to be, but they're full of self doubt and they're trying to justify it. Okay, so in your opinion, right? They're trying to they're trying to justify the self doubt because the the better person who they are they don't feel like they deserve that person so now they're trying to find a way to the, say that 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 maybe they shouldn't be that person he, he's like doing such extreme things that he has to be able to justify it in his mind so he creates Jack to be like no you see you look up to me you've idealized me therefore this proves that what I'm doing is good okay yeah. So, I have a really good, a really good way of kind of like helping your vision craft itself properly. Okay. So that you can feel good about who you are and what you do. Fuck you! I'm not gonna be a part of this podcast anymore. 
Okay, we'll, we'll be right back, folks. He'll be right back. Fuck that. Uh, okay, everybody, we're back. So I, I think we're gonna have things uh, kind of settled here. <laughs> I, I'm I'm re I'm willing to rewatch the movie and and yeah, you know, I'm willing to concede that I'm probably wrong here. Hey, right, not do me no favors, man. You do what you do. <laughs> okay, so uh, where where even were we? I and mean, we went like really, really off topic here. <clears throat> um, I think the whole point of all this, what we were originally talking about, was we were supposed to be talking about American foreign affairs. That that's right, that's right. Because, and uh, um, and unfortunately, we somehow got off topic and went down. Uh, Oh well, shit! I, I can't even say that we didn't went down like a dark alley because I mean I'm actually kind of glad we we took the approach we did because now I don't really have to waste any more time <laughs> on you know trying to help you to feel better about who you really are you know it's like it's like a rich guy that that you know does you know you now work at a soup kitchen be like ah oh, now I feel better about being a rich guy not contributing <laughs> back to the rest of the world. You know, so I will, we'll finish this up because um, okay. there are some things I really want to talk about, about that. And, and I, for me, for, mm -hmm. for the work that I put into something that I felt really strong about and I really liked doing, which was this podcast, we I would like to go ahead and, and make my final episode a good one and, and stay on topic and do and just, just make it a really good closing chapter or for, for okay. this book of, Oh, our okay. friendship. Like we, we talked about this over the ad break. I, I don't know what more you want out of me. I apologize. Said I it's very possible that I'm wrong here and that I'm willing to rewatch the movie. So I don't know why you have to be such a drama king about this. Uh so just because you're willing to rewatch the movie doesn't mean you're gonna be like, oh no, I see that I was wrong and blah 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 blah. This this I mean, is so like you. You always do this. You you always just blow all these little like these little misunderstandings completely out of the water. Just like that whole Akomi is a racist kick that you were on during season one. I, I get it. Um, okay, so, so, so tell me, tell me how, you know, no, no, no. I, 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 let, I let that pass because you and I have been friends for a while. I'm like, okay, there's no way that we could have been friends for this long and worked together for you really being a racist, right? So I was like, yeah, you probably said some things that were kind of like ignorant at the time. And I was like, okay. You know, fine. You know, you know what? He he, he grew up in a, in a place where you know that that wasn't you know he didn't have a lot of interaction with people of this or that or whatever. And I'm like, cool. And and I've seen some changes in you, some changes, but you know, off mic, there's some shit that you do that other people don't see. That I'm like, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> that I'm I'm like I'm like you know what? That's you know it's it's not too cool. But because I have seen you making some progress, I just I can't just abandon it and be like you know. It's maybe just taking a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, so to... I'm your project. Is that it? Yeah, in that, a sense, I think you are. That, that's great. So, you know, there's a oh, white man's about... burden and there's a black man's burden. Yeah, and you are my burden to stop you from being a fucking racist. Oh, great. Thing. Yeah. She, okay, you know, she thinks that's, that, that's mighty big of you. Yeah, well, thank you. I think it is too. Yeah, I'm, you know? I'm so glad for your progressiveness here and for help, helping me achieve progressiveness or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm going to just tell you right now. He ain't my brother, and he's heavy as shit. Okay, that 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 hurt a little bit right there. Okay, Aww. I'm so sorry. Would you like me to go get you a tissue? They're white, just like you. You'll probably enjoy that. You know what? You you could just fuck right off, maybe. I mean, that's a thought. Oh, oh, gee, a white guy telling a black guy to fuck off. Well, that's original. Okay, you, you know something? I've, I've been putting it off for years. I think I am going to get that neck tattoo, okay? What do you think of that, bitch? Oh, fine. I don't really give a shit what you do. You can love hats all day long. Who doesn't like hats? I don't like hats. Okay, what is with you? I can't who, wear hats. Who doesn't like hats? I can't wear hats. Hats don't look good on me. And the thing is, it took me, I don't know, like... 10, 20, 15 hats that I've bought that I thought were really cool. And then when I wore them, I realized that I can't wear a hat. I can't wear it front ways. I can't wear it back ways. I can't wear it sideways. I can't wear hats. 
and saying, I got a bunch of cool ass hats. I got a fucking Akira hat. An Akira hat that has Akira on the hats front, are cool. it's got the clown face symbol. And on the back in Japanese, it says, Akira, I can't wear it. That That is pretty cool, actually. Goddamn cool it is. Do, do you have any uh, fedoras in your cool hat collection? I do have a fedora. I have a fedora. And I'm sorry, I have a bowler. I don't have a fedora. I have a bowler hat that I got for my 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 Clockwork Orange, uh, not cosplay, it was a Halloween costume. Yeah. And even that shit didn't fit right on me. I, I don't know. I, maybe, maybe you just need like a real, like, a real fedora, like a trilby kind of thing. Oh, God, I can't. Fuck, I don't need. You no, know, I didn't even know what a fucking trilby was until I was playing Fallout 4. And then, you know, you find, like, clothing and shit in there. And it was always, like, a trilby hat. And, like, a trilby hat. What the fuck is a trilby hat? I'm like, I don't want that shit. Why is that going to protect me? I got giant-ass bugs and shit in Superman and shooting me. But I'm going to wear this trilby hat, and that's going to help me? No, yeah, I'll wear then, a fucking power armor and tell you to go take a shit. Then you can, like, open the door for women and go, m'lady, as you tip it. And then they'll want to have sex with you. It's oh. true. Yeah. Yeah. Trust yeah. me, I've tried that. No, it, it happened for me once. I mean, you don't know her. She lives up in Canada. But... You know, I don't know why I did Yeah. And I don't know if it make a difference. I don't, say, I don't know why I don't just live in Canada. Right? Because, like, the, the, like, the Canadian chicks, they're not as, they're not as, 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 as picky as, as American chicks, you know? Like, like, Canadian chicks, they don't really care. They, they've actually, they're the type of women that actually find, you know, the good part of people and, and what's good about them and will, like, you know... And love them for that. That's why so many like nerdy guys and like what we would like look at as losers always have these really nice, pretty Canadian chicks. So they actually mm -hmm. look at look for it at who you are. It's like a person, your character. But uh, but the one time that I was told, sorry, I just don't find you attractive. Man, uh, that shit hurt. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. But you mean it, she probably wasn't really Canadian. She probably moved there from another country. Oh, probably. Yeah, you know, she wasn't a real Canadian. Probably but some, the thing like, is, semi-British bitch. Yeah, so, or actually, you know, French Canadian. So she's probably from like you know, like coneheads. Like I come from France. <laughs> and, you know, they're a bunch of stuck-up bagel-eating like baguettes. Um, but you know, if if I moved to Canada though, I bet you that it it like it wouldn't be different. It's like like people from other countries like only like you when you're from when you're not from that country. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like when you go out of town and like you meet a chick and she's like super into you. But if you guys live in the same town, she'd be like, fuck you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, I hate that shit, man. <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost like like the only they're only interested in you as long as there's no chance you guys could actually really hang out and see each other on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. And it's like then it's like, oh, I love you to death. That's what I build my entire dating strategy off of. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like me like tendering with someone in another country. Like, oh, yeah, dude, I would definitely fuck you if we lived closer. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. But but you know, if we did, well, you know, I'm actually making a trip over to, to to England next month. So maybe you and I could hook up. Oh, you're you're going to be going to New Zealand that week. You know what? I can actually put it off because it's, uh, and, oh, you're, you're going to be there for the entire month. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, but 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 if if you were actually there when I'm visiting, right? Then yeah, yeah we would fuck. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> totally, totally, totally cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want want you to send me any any more videos of you sucking off other guys. I, I've, <laughs> I, I, I've got enough for right now. But no, no, no. I no, I I, I get it. You're showing me that that's exactly what you'd do to me if we were ever in the same place at the same time. No, I get it. Yeah, oh, I would love that. That's that awesome. You know the the, the thing you, you, you do with, with your th with your tongue and, and your and your fingers and then and, and, and you know the uh, the Jolly Ranchers that's 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 amazing. Uh, I don't think I would want that. Uh, dude, you with Jolly Ranchers? With Jolly Ranchers. I mean, once they get sharp enough, they're just basically knives. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, you, know, you you. I don't think that you're gonna make it all the way to it gets to the knife point. I have the endurance of an Olympian, thank you very much. <sighs> you sure? Pretty sure. Okay. Because I'm just gonna say, for someone that you know, when I did have a girl that I could like engage with, and like that was always the thing. It's like I want to, you know make sure that she's enjoying like i want to just put everything into making sure she's enjoying herself the problem is that when you do that you kind of sacrifice a little bit of your pleasure to make sure so oh, you're, you're not fully in the moment so you're not really enjoying some of what you're doing 
And then if you keep doing that, you're going to get to a point where they were like, okay, I can't, I'm done. I can't take any more. And you're like, oh, so we're done here? <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that too. I, I didn't, yeah, sex isn't about me wanting to get off or enjoy myself. No, I'm just, uh, just going to go to the bathroom real quick. Oh, yeah, I'll be back. It, it's definitely a balancing act. So, yeah. But no, just the idea of getting like sliced wide open with a Jolly Rancher in someone's mouth. Mm -hmm. mm. Nope. So I, uh, I'm, well, I thought it was going to be funny at the time, but it really wasn't, you know. Uh, you know, the whole toss salad thing, you mm -hmm. know, syrup or jelly. Um, I took a Laffy Taffy, just kind of stuck it halfway in there. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, hey, baby, let's try something different, right? She didn't think that was funny because it's Laffy Taffy. So it's not one of those things that immediately like goes away. So like a half hour later, she was kind of pissed off. Yeah, I can see why. Yeah. I mean, that, that was probably not your best idea ever. No, it was so good to me. <laughs> Never did find that Laffy Taffy. Oh, great. Yeah, it, uh, the butt kind of becomes a vacuum once it's far enough in there, so. Yeah. You know, it's, it's you know, the anus is kind of like a black hole, you know? It's like <laughs> no light escapes, just pulls everything in. <laughs> I think that's actually the title of Richard Gere's autobiography. Every anus is a black hole. Yes. <laughs> no light escapes. It just pulls everything in. <sighs> that's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I make fun of Richard Gere. I mean, obviously, there's the whole rumor thing, which I don't think is true. What what rumor? About him and the gerbil and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The gerbil? Yeah, yeah the pretty woman guy. The officer and the gentleman guy. I have no idea what this is about. You've never heard that before. I've never heard this You've rumor. never heard the rumor of Richard Gere the gerbil. No. Yeah, supposedly he was gerbling. You know what gerbling is, right? No. <laughs> like a, a real literal gerbil. Yes. Okay. Fill me in on this. Are you serious? I'm pot. Yeah. yeah. Have you never seen the South Park episode, Lemmy Wings? No. Nope. Wow, you were in for a treat, but I, I need to write that down, <laughs> Lemmy Wings. Um, anyway, yes. I'm gerbling man. was kind of a real thing. Have you ever read American Psycho? No. By Brett Easton Ellis? It's, it's been on my list, but I've, I've told you about my to-read pile. Oh, yeah. Brady, uh, so I read American Psycho shortly after it came out. Um, probably was a little too young to read it. Um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a good book. It, a lot of controversy around it. and I say it's a good book. I think it's very well written. Um, it's interesting, but it's a good read. I mean, I'm not going to say it's like, oh, it's the best thing ever. I love reading about this psycho you know, from the 80s, whatever. But it's, it's a good read. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's where someone you... You use a tube, goes in the anus, and then you coax a you know a gerbil in there, and then you pull the tube out, and then they just go to town, and you know, and then eventually I guess you poop them out or whatever. That sounds awful. I, it it does sound awful. I can't really see that as being a real thing. I don't really think it is. I think it's just something that somebody made up. But supposedly there's a story about. I, I think what you you like cap the end of it, and you use like a flame to make them run forward. <laughs> Right. Um, anyway, I, I, I don't know how it works. I've never seen it done. I've never done it. Um, but we should pull this up on the internet. No, no. <laughs> you can use your phone to do that with, not mine. <laughs> no. You already got blue office and shit in your internet history. Um, I do. But anyway, so supposedly the rumor, which I don't believe is true at all, is that he did that and couldn't get it out and had to go to the hospital. Okay. That's just like the Rod Stewart rumor. You know, I say I don't think those things are true. <laughs> um, but anyway. I don't know why I make fun of Richard Gere. Like, I don't hate him as an actor. I don't like him as an actor. He's just an actor. I, he's not somebody I watch, but why I always want to, like, default to making, like, jokes about him? I, I don't know. You know, it's just... Easy target. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah. You know, okay, I don't but he, have... he's, he's also he's also a follower of the Dalai Lama. He's all into Buddhism huh. and shit. And, like, you know, being, <laughs> you know, like, like finding serenity without ganja. Uh, so I mean, I mean, the guy like that. I mean, you, you like kind of feel bad about making fun you, of him when he just wants peace and stuff for people. And, I wish and you would write a book on religions of the world. <laughs> Chapter six: Buddhism, part one: Serenity and shit. <laughs> yeah, serenity and shit. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, well, I think that's the problem with a lot of stuff that you read nowadays is that they try so hard 
to get so far. Yeah, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. And then you 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 know, you just lose it all. But no, the uh, I think that the problem is that everything's written in the, in like like a manual. Everything is written like a like the handbook for the recently diseased. <laughs> Uh, and so it's like people you have a hard time like relating to it when it, when I'm when I'm too busy looking up the words to to re understand what the sentence means then you've lost me mm -hmm. if we could just make these things in a more like like context layman's way be like oh hey would you like to find serenity and peace and harmony within yourself by aligning your your essence and life force so you're like what uh, no 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 <laughs> I'd be like hey. And it's like Buddhism, like, you know, serenity and shit. But like, okay, I get that. I get serenity and shit. You know, bam, I'm all about it now. <laughs> my, my religion's going to be centered on magnets. Um, I think you mean vacuums. <laughs> well, no, magnets, how the fuck do they work? Uh, it's that line from the insane clown posse song, Miracles. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't heard that one? <laughs> I, I know you're referencing just shoot me, but the... no, and I'm just thinking that you know I, <laughs> I I started I started kind of remembering why you and I became friends <laughs> and why I enjoyed our friendship despite our many differences and faults <laughs> and and I was like okay yeah it's like you and I we you know we we have, we have that connection it's it's like it's like it's like wearing that t-shirt at the con and the person is like, you know, it's like, oh, I dig that. And you're like, dang, thanks. And I was remembering, yeah, it's kind of what that is. And, and, and now you just, you just drug me back like 10 fucking feet <laughs> by saying that you listen to the Insane Clown Posse. I don't listen to the Insane Clown Posse. I know two of their songs. It's like five more than I know. <laughs> I don't know them inside and out. It's just, it's a meme. All I did was reference a meme here, which is... Fucking magnets, how do they work? Which is really funny. They have the song Miracles where they reveal like, oh hey, surprise everybody, you thought we were like these juggalo rappers and we, like, we believe in God and stuff. And so they, they have the line, fucking magnets, how do they work? And it's a oh, meme. Okay, so so they came out with a, with a song that was like, oh, by the way, we're all about, we're all for show. Pretty much. I don't know if it's specifically that. I, I don't know if I've ever listened to the song all the way through, honestly. So maybe I only know like one of their songs, then. but I, all, all I really remember about it is that it had that line and that like that was such a meme. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I can't be I can't I can't be too shitty towards the insane clown posse, even though I don't like their music and I, I don't like their fans. Um, <laughs> their but fans are a little bit much. I guess I can't be too shitty with them because my late my late clownfish. Oh yeah. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, I inherited a clownfish from a man Stax, and uh, and I named him. Uh, I named him Shaggy. He didn't have a name, <laughs> but I named I named my clownfish Shaggy after Shaggy Two Dope, and it stuck all the way up until the day he died, which was a sad day for me. That is Poor sad. Shaggy. But it was it was actually I was taking care of the fish while Stax was was away, and I took a picture of him, and I was like, Shaggy's doing. Uh, I was like. Shaggy Two Dope's doing just fine, and he saw that when he was in a meeting with a bunch of people and busted out laughing. Um, <laughs> uh, and so after that, the name just kind of stuck, and that was even before, I, you know, he became mine. That is brilliant. Yes. So I'll let that pass. <laughs> now, uh, I don't consider myself a fan of the Insane Clown Posse, but the Murder Hatchet Girls. Big did they, fan. Did they ever release a full album? Was it just that one song? I think it was just that one song. Yeah. God, that was <laughs> an experience. I, I, actually, I wouldn't mind listening to that again. That was a good song. <laughs> you haven't lived until you've seen six girls who do not know how to twerk <laughs> attempt twerking for four minutes straight. You know, they should open for Dr. Roxo. Oh my God. I would pay so much money to see that. Yes. And we we were just discussing the whole uh, run the jewels concert, and it's like you know you know eight hundred dollar tickets, you know, too, too rich for for my blood. Shit, yeah. I would pay eight hundred dollars to hear the Murder Hatchet Girls open for Doctor Rock. So, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, if, if even they just, even they just did like a like a like a, a like a collaboration album, right? Mm -hmm. The Murder Hatchet Girls and Doctor Rock. So, 
But like, <laughs> yeah. That would be beautiful. Oh, oh my that, gosh. That would be quite lovely. <laughs> Needs to happen. People make this happen. I'm just going to say again, we try not to reference what we're watching on TV, but it's clear that the person here is not the person that we've been watching all this time because they're oh, making yeah. it a point not to show anything about them. <laughs> and the body type is all wrong. Very the legs different. are wrong. Everything is wrong. <laughs> Very different. Very obvious body double. <laughs> and even the hair, like the fake wig is all wrong. <laughs> uh, and, so, and so at which point I'm like, why? Like, what's the point of the scene? <laughs> Like, you're not getting anything out of it. It's, again, I'm not going to say what we're watching because it's a really garbagey show uh, or movie. But the person's doing, like, this, like, silhouette dance. Yeah, they're, like, completely backlit. Yeah. And you're not really seeing anything, but it's supposed to be one of the characters. But you can't see this, the characters, so... And you can't really see anything except for just the, the dance. And the dance has no meaning. It's not like they're doing it like like Nichelle Nichols' fan dance from <laughs> like from Star Trek, uh, well, which was the one that um, the one where they go to the ends of the earth. It wasn't the undiscovered country. It's uh, uh, I don't shit. think I've seen that one. Oh yeah, it's the one where they go and they find God. It's, it's like the, oh yeah, that one. <laughs> it's, the, it's the one after uh, Voyage Home. Yeah, um, I, I didn't watch that one. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, it's it's really bad. But she did the fan dance to like distract people. This actually has no meaning at all. And it's like what what are, why is this here? You know. That was yeah, this has been a bad movie. Yeah, th that's a scene that Andy Sedaris would have cut out one of his. <laughs> but hey, you know what? We've been going for like fifty five minutes. I'd, I'd say that's probably enough for an episode, right? I don't even know if I like this episode. I mean <sighs> I mean, yeah, this is all right. I mean, we we, we had some differences, but I, th I think we're, like, along the way to reconciling them, so, you know. Yeah, I guess if that's the case, then, you know, the part of the podcast is, is us kind of, like, you know, being real with people and being real and being honest. And, you know, we're not always going to have a podcast where the two of us are, you know, are perfectly aligned and, you know, we're stealing jokes from each other and that kind of stuff. Sometimes, you know, you get to see the darker half of, of a friendship or a relationship and, and, and sometimes it gets, it gets to the point where, you know, things kind of get a little, a little strained. Yeah. And like anything else, if you really, if it's something important, you bring it back and you make it work. And some, I guess people need to see that it's not always every time we get together. Like you know, it's like like fucking like Facebook people. Like you know, the only thing you ever see about you see the people that are always like this is always so bad. You see the people like everything in my life is so great. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, this is real. This is us, and you know, yeah. and you know, sometimes things things get get pushed, and you know, and that's it. So I guess in in that aspect. Yeah, it is a good episode. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, it's all about, like, looking past those differences, and, you know, no, nothing is, uh, nothing's going to be, like, perfect 100% of the time. Right, but, you know, if it's, and what does it say, if something's worth having, you know, it, it, it's, it's worth, you know, fighting for. Yeah, yeah. So, and, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I, I see a lot of the points you were making about Fight Club, and like I said, I'm, I'm definitely willing to, you know, re-explore that, and I, I'm totally open to the possibility that I was wrong in my theory. And, you know, and I know at your heart that you're not a racist, and you've never been a racist, you know. Well, thank you. Yeah, so... You know, you're okay for a black guy. I like to think so. No. I mean, if we were... I think if I were Swedish... It would be a completely different conversation. <laughs> yeah, I try. I, you know, like I, say, I, 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 I try not to come down on you for you know some of the things that you say that may seem kind of ignorant as in regards to like other races and stuff like that. And I'm really trying hard to break that. But man, it's, it's people from Sweden, man, if, I'm not gonna say fuck them because I know not everybody is. But man, everyone I've met, everything I know about them, cutie pie is Swedish, so. Uh, you know, case in point. Yeah, uh, just I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be a better person. Remember, we were talking about trying to be better people. Yeah, this yeah. is me trying to be a better person, and um, and I'm not gonna say anything anything about those 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But fucking blonde haired, transparent ass mother. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's just um, uh, yeah, it's good, and um, and yeah, this is uh, I don't even remember how we even started talking about this. It's not important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what what matters is that you know we're in the moment. We're podcasting. We had fun. So. We did, and um, and you know what I. I don't see any reason why we should not keep what we have going. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I I wouldn't want to do a podcast with anyone else. You know what? I wouldn't want to do a podcast with anyone else. Cool. Yeah. I mean, except Tim Robbins. I mean, if he wanted to like do a podcast with me, I'd do that. But Tim Robbins? Yeah. Can't can't do a can't do a podcast with Tim Robbins. No, I, I don't know anything about him. It was just the first name that like popped into my head. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? I, I don't know, man. You, you know why I can't do a podcast with Tim Robbins? Well, just because he was in Shawshank Redemption, right? No, that's all I know him for. <laughs> you, I, I only know him for Shawshank Redemption. You know why I can't do a podcast with Tim Robbins? You know that. Um, help me. Okay, when I had a chance to meet Chris Sarandon, why did I not meet Chris Sarandon? I don't remember. That was a busy weekend for us. Yes, but, well, okay, I wanted to even still, but there was a thing, something that was gonna that was bugging me the whole time, and I was like, I'm afraid, and I asked you specifically, said, if I get to meet Chris Sarandon, right, you have to make sure that I don't do this. I remember, but I can't remember what the thing was you weren't supposed to do. Wow, I'm glad I didn't meet him, because you probably would have fucked that up. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I said, you gotta make sure that I don't talk about his ex-wife. Oh, yeah. So who's Tim Robbins' ex-wife? The same one? Is Chris Randon? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> I figured I figured you would have made that connection there. I'm like, I'm like there's there's only three dots on the page. There's a reason I did not become a detective. Okay. Yes. Okay. Nick Cage. I would absolutely do a podcast. Oh with yeah. Nick oh Cage. fucking a. Yeah. yeah. Nick, Nick okay. Cage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well. Oh, so you would he would be your partner. I wouldn't be there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all coming together, folks. All coming together. <laughs> now who can't but, make the connection between the three dots? <laughs> <laughs> I'm to change my mind. I don't want to post this podcast after all. I just wish someone would come and take me away. Well, we'll catch you guys later. Yeah. Uh, good night, everyone. Oh shit! The topic. All right, there, folks. That was our moms think we're funny. Let's, uh, let's give him a hand.